my name is Richard Meyer and I am a developer advocate with Flow4Jink. Inc. And today I'm going to do a video on using Node-RED as an Ethernet IP to S7 protocol converter. So let's get started. Okay, so in order to do this demonstration, I want to present a mock facility here. So in this facility, I have four manufacturing lines. These are conveyor belts. You can just picture that. And in each conveyor belt, there is a PLC connected, lines one through four. And the first three lines have Siemens PLCs, and the fourth line has an Allen Bradley PLC. Let's just say this line was added at a later time or an earlier time than the other three lines, and that's why there's just happens to be a difference. It's a very common scenario in actually a lot of manufacturing plants. Then those four lines, they go to a network switch or an IDF, uh, which connects it to the OT network. And then that traffic goes to a stack light PLC. Now the stack light PLC was added by engineering because, hey, they wanted to be able to see what's going on on the line. Uh, so the operators don't have to spend so much time looking at the HMI. Again, common scenario. So what we're going to do is we are going to add FlowForge as a local instance on our OT hypervisor in order to give us the ability to convert that line four PLC data that's coming in as Ethernet IP and convert it to S7 traffic so it can communicate with the Stacklight PLC. Okay, so for an additional visual aid for this presentation, we have some physical PLCs that represent those PLCs that were shown in that Visio drawing earlier. Our line four PLC, which is an Allen Bradley PLC, that is a Compact Logics L18ER, that's right there. And for our Stacklight PLC, that is an S71200 PLC connected to a Stacklight. That is that gray box right there. And as you can see, an actual physical Stacklight. All right, now let's take a look at the data that's inside of our Allen Bradley PLC to see what we're sending via Ethernet IP to the Siemens PLC that needs to be converted by Node-RED. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, tags here of various data types. You can see we have a few bulls, conveyor RTS, conveyor ready to start, robot ready to start, conveyor running, and line four fault, those are our bulls. And we have a real here, robot position. That's just a arbitrary robot access A1 position, just to have some variety in our data structure here. And also we have line four state, Again, just to have some variety, this is a dint, double integer. So what we have to do with this data is really just make sure that it's accessible and that it's globally scoped. So first of all, you can just look at the properties of each tag, make sure they have external read write access. Really, since we're reading, technically we just need read access, but read write access is fine. Next, make sure again that it's scoped globally, which just means that it is in the controller tags. And as you can see, all six of our tags that I defined in that main routine there are globally scoped. So great. These are the tags that are going to be sent to Node-RED to be converted into S7 protocol. All right, so what's going on in our Stacklight PLC? So as you can see, I created a DB for our tags that are coming from our Allen Bradley PLC to land. And obviously the data types need to match on both ends. And just for posterity, I use the exact same names just so it's obviously easy to identify as it's coming through. Gave it a nice name from line four PLC. And what needs to be done here is that they need to be writable. So that's the most important thing. And Another important thing that may not be obvious is that you got to go to the properties of the DB and by default, optimized block access may be on. It needs to be turned off. This is just a requirement for the S7 protocol to be used to access these tags. And in addition, inside of the device itself, if you go to the properties and check the protection, we don't want any read write protection on we obviously need to be able to write to this plc remotely so that the data can be received and that's it once we've done that we are ready to set up our node red to convert the data 
Okay, now that we've checked the setup on both PLCs, let's actually create the protocol converter. As I mentioned, we are gonna do that in Node-RED and the tool we're gonna to use to deploy our Node-RED flows is FlowForge. And as you can see here, we've got the FlowForge UI. Now this FlowForge is running in a local Docker container instance. And um, I just happened to have it pulled up here, Docker Compose PS to show the different Docker containers that are part of the FlowForge Docker. And if you wanna deploy your own instance, I'll put a link in the description on how to set up FlowForge Docker, but you can also run this in the cloud as well. Our cloud instance works really well. But this particular one is going to be done locally. Okay, now let's go ahead and launch Node-RED and get this started. You can see we have an empty palette here. Let's give this flow a name. Good name for that. What? Let's add the custom nodes that we need for this. So the first one is Ethernet IP. It's this top one here, Node-RED Contrib SIP Ethernet IP. Go ahead and install it. Added three nodes to the palette and shows up nice there on the nodes list. Go ahead and add one more, the RS7. That's it. It's Node-RED Contrib S7. And they've been added to the palette and it shows up on our nodes list, great. All right. And there are our nodes right there. Now let's go ahead and drag in the nodes onto the palette and get started. Okay, so the first node we're gonna drag onto our palette is an ETH IP in node. And that's gonna allow us to read data from our Compact Logix Allen Bradley PLC. And we need to add the endpoint, which is the actual PLC itself. So the path to the PLC, which is the IP address. This is the IP address for my particular PLC. Let's also increase the cycle time. 500 milliseconds is a bit fast for a simple stacklight application. Let's bump it up to one second and give it a good name. Okay, slot zero, that's good. Now, next thing, we gotta populate our tags. The easiest way to do that is just go ahead and look at our actual controller tags on our list here. Let's go ahead and pull that up right here in this virtual machine. And here we go, our controller tags list here, side by side. And starting from the top, conveyor RTS, that's a bull. And we'll just go ahead and populate the rest of those. And I'll go ahead and come back when this is all done. Okay, now we have our six tags populated that we wanna bring in from our Allen Bradley PLC and send to our Stacklight PLC, our Siemens PLC. You can see that the tag names and the data types match up, great. So let's go ahead and add that. Now we have a new endpoint, which is our line four PLC. And single tag is what we're gonna do. We're gonna read one tag at a time and let's select the first tag on the list, conveyor RTS and give it a good name. Since we're reading these tags, I just like to say we're reading that tag name, conveyor RTS, done. All right, that's it. All right, now all we have to do is do this five more times to populate the remaining tags and I'll come back when that's done. All right, now we have all six tags in our palette. And so I'm gonna go ahead and deploy. And one thing you can see right now is, is that I set them up to be in the exact same order as they are in the PLC, just for easier understanding. You can see that they do match the status as they are in the PLC. So that's great, false, false, zero, false, one, and true. So just to test, I can go ahead and toggle this one here and see that it changed to true and back to false again. So it looks like we're good and I'll go ahead and even change this here. Change this to 10. Let's make sure that that number's working as well. And it came through, all right. So our ethernet IP data is reading good. Now let's go ahead and move on and set up our S7 protocol data. So this is the data that we're gonna be writing to on our Siemens PLC, our S7-1200 PLC. And you can see this S7 out node will do exactly that. It writes memory to an S7 PLC. So let's go ahead and drag that onto our palette. And we need to set up an endpoint, which is the PLC location. 
So populate the IP address. Port shouldn't have to change, but in my case, the slot is in slot one, not slot two. And um, everything else we can leave the same. We had the cycle time of one second on the uh, Allen Bradley PLC as well. Give it a good name. We'll call this the stack light PLC. Now these variables, this is a little bit more unorthodox, um, but if you bear with me here, I'll show you how to do it. This is our data coming in from our line four PLC and how it's programmed in our Siemens PLC. You can see this is the absolute tag reference here, this db1.dbx0.0. So I can convert that into the address format that this uh, node is looking for, which is almost the same as what it's written here, but just slightly different. We'll call it db1 and then we'll do comma x0.0. And I will show in the description a link to how to do this conversion. But basically we're pointing to that tag right there and we are gonna call it conveyor RTS. All right, now we'll go ahead and do the rest. And again, db1 x0.1 robot RTS. db1. Now this one is a real, so that's R2 position. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these and I'll come back, but again, just refer to that link in the description to get how to actually reference these absolute reference tags and uh, that'll get you on your way. Okay, and so now as you can see, we've populated all the tags that are writing to our S7 node and are going into our Siemens PLC with the absolute tag references. And so we're good to go. Those are our six tags. Connection's good, go ahead and add and we will Select our first variable that we're writing to, and we are gonna to write to this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And now all I'm gonna do is just like I did on the other ones, I'm gonna get the next five tags in, and we will uh, come back when that's done. Okay, so I went ahead and added the remaining tags to the palette that we're gonna be writing to. If you open them up, it basically just corresponds to each variable to each name, you can see. So that's good, we can go ahead and deploy that. So that's a good sign, it says online, so that means it's actually able to establish a connection with the PLC, so that's good. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and wire them up. Let's go ahead and um, connect end to end. So, time. And conveniently, I'm gonna go ahead and um, view what's going on here and deploy it. That's great. Okay, so false, false, 10, false, one, true. False, false, 10, false, one, true. The numbers are coming through nicely. All right, so now what I'm gonna do right now is just toggle a value. And I want you to see just how quickly this thing actually uh, responds because it's, 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 it's quite instantaneous. Let me toggle this tag here, toggle. You can see it's, it's pretty quick. And I'll do the next one. You can see here, change it to true, it shows up as true on there, change it to false, change this to false on there. Okay. True on there, change true on there, change to false, false, okay. So that's good. So the data is coming through and uh, numbers change. I'll change this back to zero. A little bit, okay. and it came through. All right, so our numbers are working, great. All right, now I'm going to show you in the physical space what's actually happening, because now that we actually have the data coming through, I think it's gonna be a lot more effective to actually see the stack light being changed by me toggling values in this PLC, all right? All right, now we can actually see the physical PLCs and what's going on. So let's go ahead and toggle some values and get that stack light to change state. So right now you can see the red light is on. So I, I wrote this function block to essentially drive the stack lights. Uh, so it takes the inputs and then goes into this FB here. And right now we have the red light output uh, is true and everything else is false. So I'm really just changing the states of these to drive the stack light color. 
And right now, the reason the red light is on is because we have a line fault. Does that kind of make sense? Let's go ahead and get the green light to turn on. So I'll go ahead and go back to our stack light control here. And I'm going to get the system ready to start and clear our fault. You can see our green light output is true and our green light is on. Great, okay, now let's say we lose one of our ready to start. Let's say our robot is not ready to start anymore. And now our yellow light's on. Yellow light is true and the yellow light is on. You can see this is all coming from the Allen Bradley PLC and into the Siemens PLC and driving those stack lights. And as I said, the, the, the response is essentially instantaneous. So it's working very well. All right, now let's get that thing to flash. So we're ready to start, we got a green light. All right, now let's actually start the conveyor. The conveyor's running. And right now what's happening is the red light is flashing on and off. That means stay away because uh, you could get hurt. Great, now we have a working stack light system. If you have any comments, let me know. Hope this was helpful. This is Richard with Flowforge. Thank you very much for your time.